Welcome. Hello. Welcome to PCLA's second annual Living Artistically with Parkinson's Poetry Jam. I'm Patrick Lasasso, president of Parkinson's Community Los Angeles. We're going to be hearing today from poets and writers from the Parkinson's community. And I can't think of a better way to honor Parkinson's Awareness Month and National Poetry Month than having us gather here to celebrate the creativity of our incredible community. For those of you who don't know PCLA, where have you been? We're a nonprofit that supports families living with Parkinson's through free education events, support group meetings, information and resource sharing, and more. Living Artistically with Parkinson's is one of our signature programs. Over the years, it has grown from a gallery exhibition of artists with Parkinson's to now also include virtual events celebrating the arts, including this Poetry Jam event. And a book of poetry, which was published last year, is part of it as well. And if you haven't seen the poetry book, we still have copies available. Please consider making a donation to PCLA today to receive your copy. And we'll put a link to where you can donate in the chat as well. Uh, and we'll share it at the end of the event as well. So before I introduce our MC for tonight, I want to share a few quick notes. We are recording this event for our YouTube channel. You'll be only visible in the recording if you are speaking. We will be sending a link to the recording once it's available so you can share it with your friends. Please stay muted to keep the background noise at a minimum. We are so fortunate tonight to have Wayne A. Gilbert joining us as the host and MC. Wayne is a retired teacher, a celebrated writer and poet with Parkinson's, a leader of our poetry workshops for the Parkinson's community and much more. Since he retired from teaching in 2012, Wayne has published three poetry chapbooks including his most recent his most recent one, Sacred Chill, which includes poems written during the first year of the pandemic. Wayne is co-founder of the Reconnect With Your Body, a dance for Parkinson's performance company, a co-founder of the Us in a Box Theater Workshop, and the founder and facilitator of Unlocked Poetry, a monthly poetry workshop for incarcerated poets in a Colorado maximum security prison. He also is a poetry partner of the Institute for Poetic Medicine and a recipient of the Colorado Governor's Creative Leadership Award. Wayne, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. I will turn it over to you now, and we're looking forward to hearing some of your works, among others that will be shared tonight. Thanks, Wayne. You bet. You bet. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Patrick. And greetings to all the poets and all the poetry friends out there. Um, it's good to see you all and have you here with us. I'd like to share a couple of things to, to open the evening, and then we'll hear from uh, each of the other uh, poets who have signed up for tonight. <clears throat> the, thing, the thing I want you to know about poetry from my perspective and point of view is that poetry is not just a spoken literary art or a written literary art. It is both of those, but it's also something else. I call it metaphor medicine. And metaphor medicine simply means that making poems is good for your health. That is to say, it helps us create meaning and deal with otherwise really, really difficult situations, perhaps even impossible situations. I can't imagine um, surviving Parkinson's disease um, without being able to write my poems and share my poems with others and hear the poems of others who write about this experience. I was first diagnosed in 2005, and the first thing I did was to go home and write a poem. But I want to share uh, just a, a couple of pieces with you tonight uh, to let you to indicate that metaphors matter. The metaphors we use when we uh, talk about chronic illness and disability, when we talk about our experience with the, the pain and the obstacles and the symptoms of Parkinson's in particular, um, the metaphors we use matter a lot because metaphors are what give us the room to begin to interpret, make meaning, uh, figure out what is happening to us in a variety of ways, in, in rich, dynamic, diverse ways. Um, and metaphors can be too limiting if we're not careful. 
Some say, fight, battle, win, be a soldier, never give up. You might have heard those words. I say, my body will never be a war zone. I say, show compassion. I say, surrender. I say, breathe. This is my body. My, my body, my body is beloved. My body requires care. My body requires tenderness, relief, longs for mercy. This body, this body, this body is beloved. This body is beloved. This body is me. I want to invite you tonight to, to applaud using American Sign Language. Zoom doesn't like applause, this kind of applause. So American Sign Language works really well, and this is applause in American Sign Language. Thank you. I can't stay, I can't stay strong every day. Can you? I can't always keep on keeping on. Can you? I can't raise up my chin every moment, can't hold back all my tears. Sure can't stay as toxically up as Michael J. Fox. I mean, if you can, well, good, good for you. To me, a hero, shero knows when to sit down, lean all the way back, haul off a busy day. Give pain its due, forget all the workarounds, make tea, write a poem, nap. Give tender loving care to this one and only me or you. Thank you. <clears throat> the brain in my skull, already aged, vandalized, cannot regenerate what has degenerated. Researchers say five years, maybe less. Oh, I've heard that BS for 20 years. Empty promises do not, res do not resurrect dead cells, busted transmitters. It's okay. I I'm not complaining. I accept the neuro truth, make as many poems from it as I'm able, share them help others sing and share their own good medicine, live as well as we can until we can't, then let it go without false hopes and cruel lies. Remember, this is my body. This is your body. It is beloved. It needs tenderness care, compassion. One last little poem before I introduce the first of our other poets tonight. Or this afternoon, whatever it is where you are this day. Um, this is just a real short one. I, I have hands still, but probably like some of yours, they're not always as useful as they used to be. Um, so this is a poem called My Parky Hands. Never graceful, never pretty, but strong. Not so long ago could open a new jar of pickles. Tremble now, ache, cramp, like claws, wrinkled, spotty, knuckle knots, meatless. Still, somehow, perfect for touching her. What would we do without care partners? Well, the first poet up tonight is Nelson Adler. Nelson, you're on. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks for the, so many thoughts that evoked in me, sighing, I say as I sigh. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes I'm down. Sometimes my thoughts go round and round. Sometimes I can't move, I'm so stiff. I can't stop the shakes. Sometimes I feel. Sometimes I feel like you're not coming out of control. One man earthquake. Sometimes I'm 
sighing. I can hear the children laughing and crying. The birds in the tree seem to sing, sing with such ease. Probably find love without trying. Sometimes I'm sighing. Sometimes it sounds like crying. Sometimes I'm hot. Sometimes I'm cold. Sometimes I feel so young. Other times I feel so old. Mm, sometimes I practice what I preach. I try to keep my vast supply of endless desires less than my limited reach. Sometimes I'm sighing. I can hear the children laughing and crying. The birds in the trees seem to sing with such ease. I think they're hardly trying. Sometimes I'm sighing. Sometimes it's like crying. I'm just holding on. I can't seem to let go of pictures of the life I would have had, people and places I would have known. Que sera, sera, what will be, will be. Is longing to keep what can never be owned due to a lack of humility or an inflexible insanity. Sometimes I'm sighing. I can still hear the children laughing and crying. The birds and the bees, they fly on the trees. They seem to be so sighing. Sometimes I'm sighing. Sometimes I'm sighing. I can see you're wounded. You say, I'm not feeling so bad. While you're thinking all the good times you can have in this life, I think I've already had. I said, you're depressed. Don't go playing with no gun. Pick up the phone. It's time for you to reach out and try to touch someone who will be there when you're sighing. Through your laughter and crying, the birds in the trees seem to live with such ease. Do you think they're really not trying? They never stop trying. You must never stop trying. Sometimes I'm sighing. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you. The next poet up is Cheryl Wortley. Cheryl, the mic is yours. Thank you, Wayne. My name is Cheryl Wortley, and I'm from Dayton, Ohio. I was diagnosed in 2014, and I didn't go home and write a poem. <laughs> This poem, it was written after I took a walk and I felt a lot of the things that I have described in this poem. So you just have to listen to hear what, what that was. It's called Internal Movements. Inside the body, there is movement, movements you feel. Seeing the consequence of dopamine, lack of dopamine, Sometimes a tremor, sometimes slowness, sometimes freezing, sometimes shuffling feet. Exercise is the secret to living with Parkinson's. Never understanding swinging arms and giant steps until now. A wave of sensation traveled through my body. Today, I felt, I understood. Today, I felt I understood. I perceived a new awareness. Internally, I felt the body curl, the body fold upon itself, squeezing the, uh, the organs and the muscles, hanging on to lost might. Internally, the body urges us to be still. It's trying to take our movements, trying to make us freeze, trying to stifle you. Internally, the drive for Parkinson's is strong, but we can be stronger. We can move, we can walk. We can swing our arms. We can take long, giant steps. Walk tall, swing your arms. Stand up straight, walk with a bounce and a lift. Resist the desire to slow down. Counteract the desire to be still. In the stillness, there is no movement. Without movement, you become a statue. 
Just keep moving. Combat the internal tug. Make a pledge to keep moving. Defy the desire to be still. Yes, the fight is long and difficult. This is our battle we must carry on. Our struggles, our journey must not be wasted, must not be in vain. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, nothing like modeling your poem there. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you. Our next poet is Gretchen Herman. Take it away, Gretchen. Hi there. My name is Gretchen Herman. I live in Ithaca, New York, and I was diagnosed uh, January 22. And it's, this one is called Mr. P and Me. Oh, and when I was diagnosed, I did write a poem. It took me a couple of days, but I did write one. Mr. Parkinson bestowed on me a necklace made of finest coal, fashioned from anxiety and uncertainty rare, weighted with a precious pendant of grief to let me know he's always there. Mr. P has become my constant companion. We're an item now, an inseparable pair. He caresses my face and it becomes stiff and bland like cardboard. The dying neurons he offers dampen my mood but no help arrives since he's rendered my voice an inaudible rasp of whispered sighs. Sometimes he forgets to be a gentleman and laughs as I fall upon the ground so I can show off my lovely ensemble of bruises in shards of broken glass scattered round. When we walk, Mr. P tugs at my side. He slows me down to a shuffle or he speeds me off the sidewalk to smash into a bush or a wall. When he tries to dance, Mr. P has no rhythm. He careens off chairs and counters. He leaves me to struggle with the beat. He leaves me to struggle with the steps. He leaves me to struggle with our life. But we can't find joint relief only when our body lurches into the fiery furnace blast, returning us to ashes forever together at last our next poet will be um john giannico did i say john if i butchered your name will you please say it correctly <laughs> yes you got it right wayne john giannico giannico take it away john okay thank you um john giannico from living madison county virginia i've had parkinson's for 22 years my father had it for over 30, 33, I believe, somewhere right around there. I didn't always see my father as a hero as a teenage boy because he was a lot different from my friend's fathers. But I came to see that he was a true hero after now having Parkinson's for 22 years. So I want to read you a poem I, I named The Biker. He would ride his bike for until the, almost the very end. Uh, and I have a quick picture if you can see him. There's him in Florida on his bike. That's his World War II picture. Um, it's for Ernie G. Nico. The Biker. Daddy is a biker, a man of many spokes. Some say he just spins his wheels. He doesn't listen to these folks. He does not ride a Harley, a Kawasaki, or Yamaha. It's Raleigh and Schwinn. He knows within. They're the best bikes by far. You see him in the neighborhood. He'll wave if he's inspired. An awesome sight of flesh and steel rolling by on balloon tires. From time to time, he'll throw a chain, get a flat, even take a fall. He takes it in stride. He's just that kind of guy. It won't stop him long at all. He's quiet yet mysterious. He seeks not fame nor thrills. He's happy just to ride his bike near his home in Beverly Hills. 
He could tell tales of his travels, great hills, big dogs, fast cars. He's seen a lot just rambling around the streets of Hollywood stars. These streets are filled with stories, Hollywood stars and memories. He rides alone and he's almost home. He's pushing with his knees. And one day we'll all recognize that James Dean or Marlon Brando just couldn't hold a handlebar to my dad, my biker hero. For Ernie G. Nico. Yes. Thank you. Ernest G., did you say? Ernest G. and Eco. Friends called him Ernie. G. and Eco. Okay. That was my dad's name, too. Really? Ernie. Yeah. Good name. Yep. Yeah. Need to Good bring name. that one back. Yeah. Nice to, nice to honor your father. Isn't it interesting how our parents change as we age? Um, <laughs> uh, I, by that, I mean our views of them um, change how we age and experience life uh, yeah. in these new ways. Thank you, John, so much. Thank you, Wayne, and the rest of you. Our next poet is um, Marilyn Wolf. Marilyn, there she is. Hello, okay. Marilyn. Hi there. Uh, I am in Indianapolis, Indiana, or just north of there, anyhow. I'm putting, uh, I'm not reading my own poetry tonight. I just got a new book that I really love, and I'm going to read a couple of poems from that. I put it in the chat for anyone who wants to get the book. Um, I've had friends and family members with Parkinson's since the 80s. Um, I've had a couple of friends die with it, a sister-in-law die with it, and I have another one now who's, um, you know, still around, doing as much as she can do, like uh, everyone's been saying. Uh, the first poem is called Falling Gently, which is something we have to do with Parkinson's sometimes. When the wrongs of the world are too much to dismantle on your own, and exhaustion settles over you like a fog, you have to fall gently, like a raindrop or an autumn leaf, into the arms of the earth which longs to hold you. You have to remember that all the most beautiful things fall down from time to time, that all the most beautiful things are a little broken, too. And the second one is Go Slow. Go slow, at the pace of the mosses and the trees, slow enough that green tendrils begin to sprout from your fingernails and lichen swaths your eyebrows. Go so slowly that your roots spread and uncoil and writhe down through soil and rock. Be the slow medicine that this too fast world needs. Give yourself time to unfurl like a fern in the forest ready to catch the sweet rain, the starlight, and the passing butterflies. Go gently. Remember you have pushed through many long, hard days to get here. No wonder you are tired. Take fallow days. They will be among your most productive times. Wander the wild, overgrown pathways which lead to the places in you where thousands of bright, tiny flowers open each morning to the sun in the meadows as vast as the sky. And when the time comes to show the world your beautiful colors, let the gentle seasons of your life work their own slow magic and bloom. End of poem. Oh, thank you so much, Marilyn, for sharing Carolyn Mellor. Mellor. Yes. Thank how you. Did you find, how did you find her poems? Uh, we both write on the medium.com platform, and I've read her stuff there. So when I found out she had a book, I had to get it because I really like her poems. Thank you so much, Marilyn. You're welcome. Our next poem is Ginger Halbeck. Hello, Ginger. Welcome. I'm Ginger Halbeck. I'm from Minnesota. So my problem with PD is that I am too fast. Most people talk slower. I talk too fast. So I'm going to try to slow down. My poem is called A Parky's Lament. Incidentally, I've had PD since um, 2016. A Parky's Lament. I think that I shall never see 
a poem explaining my PD, a disease that spreads its arching bowels to set me up for highs and lows. My feet are frozen to the floor. I can't make progress to the door. I stand here numbly, trembly sweating. If pee's the need, my pants I'm wetting. My fingers <laughs> gripping, gripping pins resist, writing a so simple grocery list. I cannot note appointment date nor track the food upon my plate. I've fallen down and sprained my joints. My shuffling gait absurdly points to Parkinson's without debate. It slows me down and makes me late. I get upset and try to hurry, only to freeze and in a hurry. I hold up traffic crossing streets, stand dumb when rain comes down in sheets. There is no cure, they're working on it. Let's put a bee in someone's bonnet. Legislate to find a cure, working within legislature. On Parkinson's, it has been shown we get short shrift. We're not well known. I write to Congress often now to beg support to find somehow that elusive thing. There has to be a miracle to cure PD. And so, poems are made by fools like me by trying to conquer my own PD. That's the end. Yay, thank you so much, Ginger. Our next poet is Tracy Montoya. And there she, there's, there's Tracy. I, yes, there's Tracy. Hello, Tracy. Hi. Welcome. This is my first time. I'm glad I found you guys. Uh, my name's Tracy Montoya. I live in, um, I'm from Winslow, Arizona, but I live in Apache Junction, Arizona. So um, my poem, uh, it's called, um, I got diagnosed in November on the 22nd of November of 2019. And I'm still kind of in the um, not accepting it stage, <laughs> but I'm getting there. So um, the poem I wrote is called When I Look Back Upon My Life. When I look back upon my life, it's strength I feel the most. But ever since this diagnosis, the strength I felt went ghost. I get up every day and try to do the best I can. However, some days are not easy for me. I just don't understand how all the mountains that I've climbed and conquered were not as hard for me as all this medication and the symptoms that I suffer from with Parkinson's disease. What happened to that soldier that would never just give up? I faced every challenge that I encountered <clears throat> like an 18 wheeler truck. Well, today I'm taking back my life. I'm tired of just getting by. I'm putting on the wings I've earned and learning how to fly. I guess as we get older, the past comes to show its face. We can stand tall with pride or hang our head in disgrace. I can't speak for everyone, but at least for myself. When I look back upon my life, it sure has not been ill. I just can't believe that I carried around all that baggage I could not put down. Then one day fate came knocking and I had no choice but to leave all the baggage and to use my voice. To stand tall, not defeated by mistakes I had made. Thanks to God's mercy, I have been saved. I will sing from the mountains. I'm no longer chained to my past. Thanks to God's grace and mercy, I'm free at last. I find myself thinking of days that are gone and listening while the past sings its song. Whatever has been is no longer here. Time passes by year after year. When I look back upon my life, what fit no longer does. It is what it is and it was what it was. If I could turn back time, I don't think I would. I long to go back, but I don't think I could. I'm not the same girl I once was in the past. That version broke long ago as it was made of glass. It shattered to pieces and was thrown away. Thank God for the woman I am today. If by chance you only know the old me, I'm not that same little girl, trust and believe. It took ups and downs, each failure and fall to rebuild that girl to stand up strong and tall. So when the past comes knocking, of course I reminisce, but I turn around and say goodbye with a kiss. Our next poet is Jeff Warsma. Did I say that correctly, Jeff? Yes, I uh, was diagnosed with Parkinson about three years ago, and uh, I have a few poems here. A couple of them are just for fun. So. For my son, Jonathan, I used to coach his baseball team, and I wrote this in 1997, and I'm going to read it. Boys at bat, 
Boys sit back this warm day, fresh cut grass as children play. The feel of stitches on fond fingertips, round leather balls that smack in my mitt. The weight of the bat as I enter the box, cleats digging in within the chalk. The pitcher winds up to begin the fun, right down the middle, smack a home run. Now, I can do the rhyming or the non-rhyming, but I got another one with the, with the rhyming. It's called Ancient Evening. Ancient evenings, passion sings to distance music and what magic brings. Lifetimes lived, loves forgot, new magic found and lo lovers taught. We find our way throughout this life, have been here before, could that be right? We have loved another time, an ancient evening, the perfect mind, or have we grown and learned thus far that a lover's touch outshines the brightest star? Absence of joy, absence of light, words that bring not hope, but lack thereof. Addictions decay, unhealthy, unclean, crying out for something, someone, perpetual darkness. Where is the joy? Where is the light? Hope, dismay, despair on the bus. The shadows coming for me, hiding in front of my eyes, all of them alone. Thank you, Jeff, very, very much. Appreciate it. You did a great job reading. So Charles Coverdale is our next poet, and Charles is right there. The mic is yours, my friend. Okay. Take it away. Thanks very much. I'm enjoying it so far. So Moon comes to visit, pausing by water lily. Frog leaps to moon, splash. Okay, that's the first poem. And now I'm gonna turn it over to my friend, oh, compadre of mine. And I'll do, I'll do it one again, not about Parkinson's directly, but a way to help deal with his humor. So here we go. Let's see what you think of it. This poem is gonna be read uh, by uh, Lefty. He's a friend of mine. Lefty, by the way, is a good guy. So somebody told me that cowboys were writing poetry some time ago, so I decided I'd write some poetry, cowboy poetry. So here we go. This one's called Going Out to Beaumont. Well, I'd like to go and relive again when I was four or five, when the world was filled, filled with magic and my grandma was alive. So I'm going back to Beaumont just to play in the dirt. I'm just gonna wear my underpants. I ain't gonna wear no shirt. Well, mama was a trauma, but grandmother was grand. Everyone else was all screwed up. She could understand. She made vanilla wafers from a box by Nabesco. Let me make some great mud pies. That's why I'm gonna go. Yep, I'm going out to Beaumont just to play in the dirt. This is going to wear underpants and I ain't going to wear no shirt. I'm going to eat watermelon, spit the seeds on the grass. I'm going to find me an older babysitter girl and show her my little ass. Grandma saved my life one, one time while I was zipping up my jeans. The little feller got caught real bad. There was blood and there was screams. Grandma had a way of making everything all right. She kissed my other boo-boos, but she skipped that one that night. My grandma had a sister who shot a fox in the head. When I go to see grandma, I sleep right in her bed. And once I saw her naked and she said, don't look my dear. Her tits hung right down to her waist and they look just like dog's ears. That's why I'm going out to Beaumont, just to feel so free, to pretend that Grandma is still alive and looking out for me. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, 
Charles, you're a very bad man. <laughs> uh, that was wonderful. A compliment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, you're not Charles now with, with the hat on. Who, who? What's your name with the hat on? Lefty. Lefty, well, I want to bring Charles back so we can give him a little hand, huh? Uh, uh, right on. That was fun. And now we're going to meet Mar Morgan Zoe Callahan, um, who's our next poet. Up. Thank, thank you, Wayne. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2020, and I'd like to share uh, a, a, a poem about uh, a basketball, of all things, uh, and uh, three haiku. When I when I was younger, I used to love to go to Venice Beach, California, and play basketball along the ocean. For a while, there was a, a university freshman. A freshman on the women's basketball team that would join us. She was good enough to play, uh, you know, on fairly high level games. I call her Tamarin. Tamarin. One California fresh, buzzing Venice Beach day, sea waving to us basketball guys and to Tamarin, sole female hoopster, tall. Elegantly dark complexion team with game. Wraps her legs with springy tawny cloth like slow motion, prepping for ballet. Firmly binds up her calves to gold glistening lower thighs, ritually pads her knees snug. Praying, cursing, sight ready, quick and charmed. We all want her. Between games, a dreadful, exhilarating fantasy, a bizarre vision captures my heated brain. Panting, stretching hips, making knee circles. I am out of body, leaned over in an unwanted reverie. Bouncing my shiny brown head up the magical gray, elevating stone floor. I sling my no-face ball to streaking tamarind, poised for a layup. My spherical crown soars just outside tamarind's reach, upwards rocketing to an encompassing heaven light, infinitely expanding, uplifting, deeply warming. I lost my head, bawling with tamarind that unexpected Oceanside summer day. Some out of the blue time, let's play beheaded far beyond the vast white foaming aqua seas. Three haiku, beginning and ending with basketball. Snow softened black morning birds, singing spring, gentle green. Golden lemons soaked, dangling in silvery rain. Dark evening shivers. Oh. Ball round like earth. Sky air dance. Swish through the hoop. That seems all right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Basketball. But thank you. Morgan, that's so cool, man. I love basketball. And thanks, Morgan. Thank you all. Our next poet this evening, Angela. Angela Neff is at the mic. And Angela, all Great. ears. Thank you, everyone, for this incredibly inspiring, fun jazz. I don't want to say jazz because it feels like jazz, but poetry jam. Um, my name is Angela Neff. I'm from Los Angeles, and I was diagnosed in 2019. So the poem I'm writing, uh, reading today is uh, inspired by a young woman who wrote a poem after 9-11. And I felt that um, her poem is very much about life before something, like before 9-11 and now. 
those of us who have Parkinson's, we really, I think we do see our life often through that lens of before Parkinson's, what we thought our life was going to be like, and then now. So the poem is called, How My Life Has Changed, uh, inspired by Hillary North's 9-11 poem. I will no longer be able to walk without focusing on swinging both arms. I will no longer be able to run fearlessly down a hill. I will no longer be able to eat voraciously without the fear of choking. I will no longer be able to reliably sing on key. I will no longer be able to dance on beat with wild abandon unless somebody offers me a chair. I will no longer be able to assume I will complete my to-do list. I will no longer be able to take anything for granted. I will no longer be able to say, oh, my family only has mental illness. I will no longer be able to easily read my own writing. I will no longer be able to be confident I can smell that gas leak, freshly baked bread, or my B.O. I will no longer be able to be successfully be cocky. I will no longer be able to forget to smile in social situations lest people think I don't like them. I will no longer be able to say, I'm perfectly healthy. I will no longer be able to know what part of my body will fail me next. I will no longer be able to assume friends and family understand what it's like to live in my body. I will no longer be able to attend a new location without scouting bathroom locations first. Then I will no longer be able to do not plan what I wear so I can undress in time to make it to the damn bathroom. I will no longer be able to miss the compassion and kindness of my fellow PDsters. I will no longer be able to assume my future partner will still love me as my disease progresses. I will no longer be able to count on my body not to betray me. I will no longer be able to know. I won't forget what I'm saying mid-sentence. I will no longer be able to say, dysphagia, what's that? I will no longer be able to fake anything. I will no longer be able to be heard without speaking with intent. And I will no longer be able to assume I will have the ability to safely carry my future grandchild. I will no longer be able to believe I am invincible. Angela, that's incredible. Thank you, Angela, so much. My pleasure. Thank you. And we'll go on to our next poet now. Um, Jen Pacini is here, and her mic is open. And I suspect um, Jen is ready to go. So take it away, Jen. Yes. Um, so I live in Newport Beach, California. I've been diagnosed since 2018. And this poem was first uh, included in a Parkinson's art exhibition in 2021. And the theme of the uh, exhibition was vivid dreams. Deepest darkest. Deepest darkest keeps calling invites only me. Every second beat is terror. I still RSVP. Am I the dragon or am I the gold? Am I the buyer or have I been sold? Are you the rabbit or are you the hat? Did you leave quickly or simply crash splat? Is that the cash or is it the thug? Could you be the needle and I be the drug? My broken wing beats your hidden snare. Your empty socket trumps my empty stare. Beware the captive, 
set free the guard. Are those fresh breadcrumbs or bones in the yard? I rush through the maze despite what I see. The night won't stop screaming, or maybe that's me. Thank you, Jen, very much. Our next poet and, and uh, is uh, Steve Backer. Hello, Steve, welcome. Hello, hello. My name's Steve Backer and um, uh, I live with my wife in Lake Forest, California, which is in South Orange County. I was diagnosed, uh, I guess, a couple of years ago, beginning of 2021, but I'm 76. About 30 years ago, I started losing my sense of smell, my hearing, and losing my ability to swallow. So I've had these stupid symptoms for over 30 years. Um, my poem is called Sometimes. Sometimes it just seems like my life is perfect. And sometimes it doesn't seem that way at all. Sometimes I feel like I am really making progress. And sometimes I wonder how I could ever think that. Sometimes I exercise and it just all goes down so easy. And then sometimes it feels like they slip me into someone else's creaky old body. Sometimes it feels like I am surrounded by wonderful friends I love being with. And sometimes I just wonder where everyone went. Sometimes I think about all the things I'm grateful for and it's so easy to list them in my mind. And sometimes it seems like I just can't think of a single one. Sometimes I think I have really made peace with God. And sometimes I don't think there's anyone out there at all. Sometimes it feels like I just have nothing to worry about. And sometimes I feel dread everywhere I look. Sometimes I think I have this PD thing figured out. And sometimes I know I never will. Sometimes, well, sometimes I just don't know. And then Nance teases me. And then sometimes it all makes sense again. And even if it doesn't, it just really doesn't matter. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. Well, there's one more poet on my list. And uh, I believe that is Thomas Tosentino. Well, first, I want to thank you for letting me come in at the end. Today is my birthday. I'm 64. And I, I told my wife I have to take a 10-minute poetry break from the, we have friends over. So, uh, oh, and by the way, I was diagnosed in 2015. So I've had Parkinson's for about seven and a half years. Uh, so I like to say I'm kind of like this. I'm still, tremors are very mild, which I really like. So here goes. The tremors come and go. They shake me to and fro. They make me want to cry, but I will not give in. I will not let them win. I know that I am strong. Know that I can go on. I know that I'll find a way to beat this awful disease. To rise above, above this pain and misery, I will not let Parkinson's define me. I will not let it control me. I will not let it take my wife, life away. I will fight back with all my might. I will not give up without a fight. I know I can do this. I know I can't beat this. I know I can beat this. I know I can win. I know that I can rise again. I know that I can be reborn. I tried to tie, I, my thought was trying to tie something in with Parkinson's and Easter about rebirth and, you know, the spring and, and all that. That was kind of like what I was trying to accomplish here. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Glad you made it. Happy birthday. All right. Well, what an evening, y'all. What a, what a time. What a wonder we are, all of us. Um, I want to close with a with a little poem before I turn it back to um, Patrick, because um, for me, there's one metaphor that keeps on giving that has never let me down. Um, and Angela referred to it a moment ago, and that's jazz. It's all jazz, y'all. Improvise, listen, incorporate, integrate, improvise, listen, feel deeply. Didn't bata play, listen, feel further in, further down, play that. 
further down. Play that. Listen, improvise, feel each note, each space between, feel the way notes run together, make a phrase. Incorporate, integrate, listen, play, listen, play, feel, always feel, anticipate. There are no wrong notes, only new moments, opportunities to listen, improvise, feel. Your ear, your heart, your voice, your deepest affections, emotions, questions, celebrations, fears, feel them, cross them without thinking. Flow, flow the way water always flows toward free. No matter the pain, play that. No matter the suffering, play that. No matter despair, anxiety, depression, death, play that. All the ways you hurt, play that. All the little things bring you pleasure and joy, play those. Feel it all. Improvise. You are the instrument. You are the instrumentalist. You are the source, the sound, the rhythm and flow. You are the music itself. It's all jazz, man. It's all jazz, woman. It's all jazz. And there's only this one night at this particular club called Earth. So play. So play freely, play. Feel, put it all out there on the stand for all to hear. Leave some space for your bandmates too, because it's all best when it's a jam. And the jam is hooking. Oh, for everybody. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thanks for all the wonderful poems. Patrick, I turn this wonderful occasion back over to you. Wow. Um, I don't know, uh, you know, when it hit me, but this was a special event, right? And Wayne, you were a teacher. Thank you for coming out of retirement tonight and teaching us uh, about the words that we're speaking and helping us understand poetry even a little bit better than when we started this time together, right? Um, you all have done such amazing things. You know, for those of us that have seen many people with Parkinson's, maybe even thousands, there are certain common things that you see, but there are also things that you surprise, surprise you that, um, that you maybe hadn't noticed before. You always you never stop seeing something new. But the one thing everybody with Parkinson's has is that journey to and moment of the diagnosis, right? So thank you for having the courage to find the words and um, share your experience with us. Thank you, Wayne, and thank you, poets. We are honored that you shared our work with your work with us tonight. If you know PCLA, you know we have some fantastic free education events. Join us later this month for an event about palliative care in Parkinson's. In May, we'll hear about the latest advances in deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's and about mental health concerns and how to boost our mood for maximum quality of life. Uh, links to register for these events as well as updates for all of our programs will be sent out to us as well. Uh, the poetry for Parkinson's book is still available. Excuse me, poetry, uh, poetry of Parkinson's book is still available. And many of tonight's poets have pieces published in this book Copies are available with a $25 donation to PCLA, uh, but visiting the link you see on the page here, you can also scan the QR code right now with your phone and go directly to the page. And we hope you will do that and help us continue our uh, important mission. Our Living Artistically events are brought to you by donations from generous people just like you. By donating to PCLA, you join us in our mission to improve the lives of the families in our community who are living with Parkinson's 
PCLA is a nonprofit and all the donations are tax deductible. If you enjoyed today's, today's program, please consider donating at PCLA.org to help us continue to provide programs like this for free. For free. We are a little more than halfway through our Parkinson's Awareness Month fundraiser. Consider donating, donating just three dollars or more to help us reach our goal of three thousand dollars in thirty days for uh, for our community programs. As always, if you have questions or need resources, reach out to us at info at pcla.org, or you can ring us at 310-880-3143. Thank you. Thank you.